Welcome to the Filling Pieces Summer School. I'm your host, Constantine. I'm one of the co-founders of Full Circle, and I'm also part of the marketing team here at Filling Pieces. And today we're going to learn about the ever-evolving relationship between fashion and art. Fashion and art have always been closely related, constantly influencing each other. But what does this relationship look like in the digital age? To find out, we have invited some very talented creatives from both the art and fashion worlds. Thank you for being here. So I think to start off, we'll just do a little round of introductions, just, you know, explain who you are mm -hmm. and what you do and what your relationship is with fashion or art. Want to start? Cool. Yeah, my name is uh, Bob Cizo. I'm 22 years old and I'm uh, living in Amsterdam. I'm a multidisciplinary artist. I do a lot of painting, uh, but I also keep busy with making videos, music videos, commercials. Uh, and my origin is photography. so. Through photography and video, I always get in touch with fashion. And now having a studio in Amsterdam Nord, I also get to see the process of fashion as I'm uh, in close contact with some people who actually make clothing and design clothing. So uh, yeah, there's some overlap there. Nice. And you, Maru? Yeah, me, uh, I'm uh, Maru. I, uh, I work with uh, two of my friends on a brand called The New Originals, well, with a, with a team. I uh, started with uh, Risky and Aben. Uh, that goes for the fashion part. And with that, we interact with a lot of artists. And uh, uh, yeah, art is heavily involved in everything that uh, inspires us, I would say, and makes us uh, ambitious for the things that we make and do. So that's uh, it's very much intertwined. Nice. Well, my name is Tim West, I'm 27 years old, um, and I create a lot of shit, having fun. Nice. And the fashion part, I recently started uh, uh, with a brand, it's called One Off, together with Rene from Rijgaarde, and I'm responsible for all the imagery and films and campaigns, so that's why I do in fashion. Cool, nice. Sounds like we got a pretty... <laughs> you know, like good range of different people who are involved with either fashion or art, which is, I think, going to offer like very good perspective on this topic. So, uh, yeah, I want to dive right in. I think, um, how would you describe the relationship between fashion and art today? Because um, it's always been there, you know, <clears throat> like very closely related and intertwined. But of course, now you have the digital aspect of it as well. Like, I know you mentioned uh, before this that you've never really, like, been involved in fashion on, like, a product level yet. Uh -huh. But how do you see it? I, I see it as, a, like, from a perspective of a creator, I would see it as, uh, it's, it's a reflection of culture, but in a different medium. So fashion, fashion is out on the street and you can see and you also look back in time and get a sense of, like, well, what's going on, what are the vibes. And the same for painting, but uh, on a different medium and a different interaction between viewer and uh, an object. Um, but I feel like for me lately, there, there's been more overlap because I get in contact with people who do actually fashion. And I just see that there's a lot of uh, ground where we can both learn from each other because there is use of colors, use of physical material. Um, for me, it's always just a big, big jump on how, uh, what the difference is between wearing something and having something on the wall. I feel like those are two completely different ways of, uh, of uh, receiving a story as well as of showing one. Uh, but both, both work in different ways and both have different, um, different qualities to it. I mean, if you walk around on the street with uh, a limited piece or something that was created, customized, something like that, it still gets, still gets like the, the eyes on it, but in a different way. Mm. And it's less controlled in a way. You don't go to a gallery, you don't go to a museum, but it's, it's out there, you know? Mm. So yeah. that's what I like. Nice. And how do you see it? I mean, coming from more of like a fashion background and owning a brand, like how's your relationship to art, you know, in yeah, comparison? I think, I think the accessibility of, of, uh, of the whole world around you versus going to a gallery or, or a museum. Uh, it, it shows a lot of what Bob was already saying, like uh, the whole world around you can influence you in whatever your, 
your uh, inspiration is and, and how, you, how you get triggered. And I think that's one of the important things for me in art, you know, what, what it triggers. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a form of expression, you know, to, to be uh, representing something, to communicate in, in a way that you're a part of something. It, it is deeply rooted in this uh, necessity to express and this, this is a, uh, yeah, the road that led, led me to uh, more refined art, for example, which I didn't know anything of, but <coughs> through culture and through, yeah, dressing up in some certain way, mm. you get in touch with people that are like-minded. And now, now in a time where everything is, you know, so so accessible, the internet is even more accessible than the street out here. You get to be influenced from all. All over the place, which, um, yeah, for the good and the bad. I mean, <laughs> I took it a, a bit further from yeah. the question, but I mean, yeah. from what it inspired me on, well, I, growing up with hip hop, I, I would say you need to wear some Tims and um, some baseball jacket to, to find like minded people around. Uh, I mean, not necessarily the generation that I grew up, but that's what I saw on TV, for example. Mm -hmm. Coming of age now, where, yeah, people really. <laughs> They dress all certain ways and can hang out together, you know? You don't need it to recognize anyone. So it became more of, of, an, of an art uh, in, in, uh, yeah, in, in, uh, in an individualistic way, more so to say. Nice, interesting. And what about you? I mean, you can definitely see that fashion plays a very big role in the, the music and the art that you make. Like, what is your relationship yeah. <coughs> there? To me, it's, it's all the same. For myself, because to me, fashion, what he says, is, is it's an expression, and art is an expression as well. <clears throat> and to me, um, I connect with brands where I see the, because now I work with these clothes, right? I see them every day. It's like I touch them, but we create new worlds like around it, like the the whole uh, the, the 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 DNA of the brand is what you connect with. And these are these cra crazy ideas that coming, those dreams you create in, an, in, a, in a runway show or in a campaign or in a movie. And you connect with that part of, uh, uh, of, the, of, of, the, of the fashion, for me. So when I see uh, Jacques Mou doing something crazy and when I wear Jacques Mou, I feel like I'm part of that dream or that inspiration. So for me, it all comes it's so intertwined. Mm. It's 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 an expression. One goes hand in hand with the other. Yeah. So could you would you say like, or can there fashion, can there be fashion without art, and vice versa? For me, no, because like if you create a special piece, to me it's art. So I have a a, a to me like art has a new definition. There's a lot of things that didn't have the. <laughs> the label of art, to me, they are art. For example, like back in the days, you didn't have uh, fashion in museum. Now you have, because mm -hmm. we as a community decided, like, okay, this this piece that a person created from a dream or from a vision or from an expression, it's it's art, and that's why we put it into a museum. Mm -hmm. So it's it's so intertwined. And For me, the terms are also like container terms, you know, it, it also, it represents so much that it's very hard to, to, uh, to locate. Exactly. There's areas from art that influence fashion, but there's also a lot of fashion that has nothing to do with art, mm -hmm. but is, is maybe considered as fashion because they operate in, in a certain way. You can be an artist at work making fashion, you know, like artistry, like yeah. a paint, uh, like a, oh, not painting, but um, drawing, <laughs> sketching, and, and, and you know, putting all the details in a way that no one has ever seen before or, or right at the spot. But that, that, that whole, the whole fashion industry, it also derives, it, it, it goes wider than this, you know? Yeah. It, and the same goes for art as well. Yeah, like, exactly. You have pop art, which may be uh, alike this form of fashion, mm -hmm. so to say. I mean, the terms are really big. I, I, I came yeah. to also reflect on what I was saying and as you were speaking, your, yeah. your mind. Like, of course, but you, you directly think of what type of art inspires you. Yeah, 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 you know? of course. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I, I think yeah. it would also it would jump. Fashion would jump to the category of art when you, when it's not a necessity. So when such as clothing, but when mm. someone has put in these ideas and this energy and transferred it to their own object. The only difference then is that it's being worn mm-hmm. by someone, but it's still uh, there's still this creative energy put into it, and I think that's on its own could be considered as art also as a form of art, form of expressing. So yeah, it's, also, it's, it's, it's also with product. Like, if you like, for example, if this is just um, a sculpture, it's a piece of art, right? And it, it's in a museum. But as soon as we do this and we put a glass on top of it, and it's a, it's a table, mm-hmm. we say it's design. So, but is it art or is it design? It's like to me, everything is art. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, and this is the same with fashion, and it's the same with music. And there's a, yeah, I just think about these things mm-hmm. like that. I don't know if is that the, the so right it's answer. <laughs> almost like by default, kind of fashion is art and art is fashion in a way. Is that what you're saying? Mm. Or does it go more for fashion being art? Because I can see that an artist could say like, yeah, I have nothing to do with fashion. Uh-huh. Fashion being art, uh, starting from the moment when it's not made for a necessity, when it's not just clothing, but it's someone is trying to tell a story through mm-hmm. it and create its own little universe yeah. through a collection for example mm-hmm. uh, but i wouldn't say it's a t-shirt at the zayman or like some basic items it's not art it's it's um that's product mm-hmm. but yeah. there's there's very i think the line and the distinction starts when uh, uh, when the ideas that are being channeled through the product are genuine and they are to create it, their own narrative in a way when it's not just commercial like uh, clothing, yeah, but there's overlap for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's the same with a print. If you have a, if you have, if you have a printer and you print a picture, it's you don't say it's art. But if there's an artist that painted that com- uh, that made a composition and he printed it with a printer, you have the same piece of paper, mm. but now it's art, right? Mm. Or made by an artist, you know, like a, a, a Murakami, a, a merchandise. T-shirt like Takashi Murakami, he makes so much product, mm-hmm. but he's he's seen as an artist. <laughs> yeah. But the product that he makes is not art anymore. Okay. You don't care that it's not art. It's it's from an artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the T-shirt from Murakami with uh, or some you know some object that or some, mm. any artist, like you can make an a, a product, the intention of it to show some, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and then comes also back like or the craft, you know. I think the. the there's layers in that too, I think. So yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Do you think that's maybe also why in the last couple of years, especially these fashion X art collaborations have become so much more prominent? Like, is that what they want to harness? This like, you know, creative storyline or force of an actual artist? I think it's also because the community got closer. It's 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 less of like there's painters here, there's there's fashion designers there, yeah. there's video makers here. It's like it's it's one big group, you know. So that yeah. allows for collaborations to start way easier. So I feel like the the landscape it what is what forms the actual like outputs. Uh, and I feel like now the landscape is very suitable for this. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. there the connections are short the. It's not weird anymore to be, to be mingling like the the different formats. It's it's accepted, and now I feel like it's a good time. Yeah, definitely. To collaborate. And why do you think that is now? Um, the the world got smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's and like information is out there. It's it's very easy to keep up with uh, fashion lines, even if you're not attending Paris Fashion Week every year. You you'll still get the get the collections through, through Instagram, through, uh, through the community that's close to you. So I think the world got smaller and it made it easier for us to, uh, to merge in these things. Nice. How do you find that, for example, when you're working together with artists with the new originals, like what role does technology play in facilitating those uh, collaborations, for example? Yeah, well, well like the platform of, of uh, clothing and vice versa, the medium that, that, that artists can use to show their work is, uh, is very different from, from a painting. 
like uh, Pop started with, you know, to, to have someone to see your painting, you really have to arrange a, a big space where you can see it and people have to find a way and on a t-shirt it's, it's rather different, you know. The, a young kid that sees some t-shirt in a video clip of some rapper gets to meet this artist and then see what he makes. Well, if you feel interested, you can go to this and that gallery and find out about more uh, artworks that he or she made. And that's, that's, that's a very good thing about it, that, uh, that we are able as, as a brand to, to facilitate that and in general that that happens. Uh, but there's a flip side as well. I, I mean, as a brand, with, you know, we constantly try to find different ways to interact with artists. And our clothing is, is, the, is, the, is the carrier of our message. And if someone wears the new originals, they hopefully know about what, we, what the intention is behind the whole brand and why we started it. But through collaboration and events, and then again to work with an artist, but do something completely different than a t-shirt, but build an installation or, or, or do, do events in, in uh, cultural spaces and let artists decide what they envision with uh, the reach of a clothing brand, which distributes in a, in a very different way. Uh, yeah, that, I think that's, that's where the interesting uh, uh, stuff is happening right now. Uh, collective ideas, you know, all these people working together. I can offer this, I can offer that. It's like the bands in the 70s. Everyone picked up an instrument and started playing some good stuff. That's now happening in a very wide way. But it also blurs so many stuff. Like, I don't want to make a flip side necessarily, but it's also good to mention that the, um, to open up doesn't mean that you have to uh, yeah, commercialize stuff for it to be seen, but it gives artists the, the chance to embrace that world more. And uh, yeah, that, that should also be possible. I mean, artists should get more uh, ways of, of getting money uh, uh, so they can really focus on the craft side of, of what they're doing. Right. And, uh, yeah, if we as a brand can help that, so you don't have to work in, in another job to be able to pay that you can paint, get the nice paint or, mm -hmm. or find a studio. I think that's, that's, that's uh, where, where, uh, where we should go as an ecosystem, as an industry. That's the good thing of art and fashion coming together, that we can you know, facilitate each other. In that in that way, and what in terms of like authenticity? Because I'm sure there's a lot of artists out there who, or it used to be that way when artists would collaborate with really big companies who can kind of had the budget to arrange is, that. They'd be like, "Oh, I don't want to sell out." But now is, we can get really grumpy about this. But earlier in the '90s and '80s, this was the thing that people were were fighting for. Like, "Oh, they don't." See I'm not sure, maybe it's a bold and big statement, but back in the day it was like, why don't they do it? And now it's really in big numbers, like companies get, look at hyper-local uh, people and you don't really have to form a big mass to, to say, hey, Coca-Cola, invest in us. Like, it is possible. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, yeah, he did it. So what's wrong with this, this artist? Would you also say that like uh, fashion could be a way to make art which is always seen as something high profile more accessible to people that never go to a museum for example absolutely and they see someone with a t-shirt by some artists and like, yeah, we should applaud that actually mm -hmm. i think if, I think if it can be like a step uh, step to like a bridge to an introduction to the other yeah discipline yeah 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 and i think everything is more accessible nowadays like back in the days you had only a few big artists in the world because they had the company behind them and then they became big because they needed the television, they needed the radio stations, they needed all of that. It's the same with the brands. They had, they had the money to make these big commercials and they only could pick uh, a few artists because there wasn't that many artists that were well known mm -hmm. or that people saw. And nowadays you have your own platform because of the internet. So you have instead of... Uh, 10 artists you have that people know about or that inspire the world. You have many different artists that inspire people and now they're really focusing on what he's saying, like hyper, like a micro level, like mm -hmm. who's that kid in that town? 
who is the kid in that town, and so you can collaborate with many artists. So this, yeah. the, the, the volume of it became yeah. much higher. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's actually going to, I mean, I had the next question was actually, you know, both fashion and art used to be quite elitist and exclusive. Yeah. Um, so, like, what's changed? But I mean, that's kind of where you're going with this, right? Yeah, I think it's the, the internet was crazy for our generation. Like, it was COVID. Um, I was sitting at home. I worked on an album, uh, music, and I finished it. I was like, yo, who I want to work with for this album cover? And, like, I said, Ibrahim Kamara. Ib Kamara is, like, crazy visionary uh, somewhere in London. Mm -hmm. He does like all the Louis stuff and and then because of the internet, like we followed each other, like had a conversation. He said, yo, fly to London, boom, we work. Like back in the days, I could say, yo, I want to work with um, Alexander McQueen, but it wasn't possible because like he, w he wouldn't see me. Mm. I wouldn't be able to like, know his people or whatever, but because of the internet, we can do these kind of things nowadays. So the world opened up and it has a, a lot of positive things to it, and, but also some downsides, you know? That's always the case. What would be some downsides in your opinion? There's a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of shit. I think that's also the main thing where artists would refrain from uh, working on a fashion collection so soon because there's so much shit it kind of um, um, it, it makes the the concept of uh, combining the two not not something to uh, you get too excited about but there's some quality stuff in there too and I think those should be highlighted yeah uh, but there's a lot of shit too yeah no that's that's it's, a lot of that's a lot of quality still though but the thing is because there's so much Plus, the, another downside is that mm, uh, I struggle with that myself a lot. Uh, it seems like it's not about the quality anymore, but it's about the quantity. And it's just the way these, these platforms are set up. It's like if you, if you put out a lot, it's like it's going to do a lot. People forget about you in like a day. That's, that's the culture we live in. And yeah, that it's, can, how, it's how we consume as well. Yeah, it's how it's, we. It's not how it's offered. The, how it's offered, it's also by demand. No, it's it's because it was designed like that, and we got into the design, and they programmed us, and now we think like that. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to kind of go a little bit back to the uh, collaboration discussion that we had earlier. Um, what role do you? collaborations have in this generation's art and fashion movements and why do you think they're so important? I mean, we already kind of touched upon this earlier, but uh, yeah, what do you think? I, yeah, I think collaborations can be a way, just like group exhibitions, to have overlap in audiences. So when I do collaboration with a designer, for, per se, it would, it would bring my audience to the designer and get to appreciate that output and the other way around as well. So it's about, um, uh, it has more effect than if you stay in your own lane, you know? It, it merges these two, these two worlds. So I think that that's an uh, important and effective thing of collaborations like those. Nice. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> like, what role do collaborations have in this generation's art and fashion movements? And why do you think they're important? It's it's that's the ground I think of the of the the recent years that collaboration is a uh, is happening all around us in all forms. That that whole, I mean, it's a classic one. But to see Kanye leaving Nike and then s selling shoes to the whole world around us, it led to this desperation of all these brands. Like, yo, we need to get yes. everybody in as soon as possible. <laughs> all of the brands and and. It's also on a on a on a smaller scale, like even small young brands collaborating with small young, sharing audiences. That's that is the thing mm -hmm. of 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 right now. It's not like okay, you go in in a, and we you know we kind of go back and forth in this, but you take your time in a in a closed uh, uh, bubble, 
and you, you know, you shut off from the world to, to do your craft. Right now, you can ask so many help, so much help from from so many uh, sides of your network or social network, mm -hmm. and get people involved. You can start a brand and not design anything. You can be an artist and not do anything. Mm -hmm. Have a team do it for you. Yeah. I mean, it depends on how you see collaboration, also brands and organization, obviously, yeah, yeah. but... Yeah, because of, you know, some of you have been part of these Art X fashion collaborations. Um, what does that process usually look like? I mean, you were talking about, you know, trust uh, and respect for each other <coughs> as yeah. kind of like the foundation. Yeah. But what else is there that needs to happen for, you know, a collaboration to come to fruition? You got something to offer for each other, you know. I think it's super good if you, for, apart from the business side, right? So, so not because of commercial reason or platform show, so showcase some, but really like an artist knowing a way to use color or form or design in a way that can uplift a brand or a brand that can offer the resources to to activate this idea of an artist that is not possible without the resources. Yeah. And where do you go if you want to start a production line of something or... And especially, yeah, I mean, business is not a swear word. You can use each other for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. For bigger businesses, it would also be... Working with artists is, is a good thing to do because you get to... Uh, artists have a pulse of what's happening. You yeah. know? So if you, yeah. if you align those two, you... Uh, the business is able to connect with what's actually happening inside of the world through the artist uh, because they're the ones informing exactly. the business. They're the, they're the players. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's, it's culture. It's culturally driven. Yeah. So it depends also the culture of fashion or the culture of art that, that we're talking about. I mean, and like to see Kanye West do what he did the last 20 years is uh is is actually all we need to know for example yeah. in in this conversation to me like he really pushed some barriers on this mass commercial level and now anyone in the world can that knows dark twist beautiful dark twisted fantasy can can say they 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 have been interacting with uh with an art house and and fashion and everything like he he really kick down those doors and for everyone to duplicate this in as many ways as, as, we, as we see around each other. And of course, he's inspired by many, but mm -hmm. that, that is so significant. That is so massively significant what he did. Plus fashion, it, it goes like, it's, 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 it goes really fast. It's always been like that. It's like a season, 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 fashion week, fashion week, fashion week. And an artist, with, Nina Simone said, like, reflects his time. So I think it's important what he said, like, the artist is really part of that culture. He reflects his, if he reflects the time. Mm -hmm. So for a brand to work with these persons that reflect the time, because that's what they need. They need, they need to reflect the time. So you think authenticity definitely plays a very important role mm -hmm. in the outcome. But then who's the judge? Is it? You know, mm -hmm. is it the creatives themselves or other creatives? That's or? always the question, I think, with both with art and fashion, because uh, eventually the consumer decides like what's what's popping, mm -hmm. what's not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, talking about art and fashion, it's always, it's so such a subject subjective thing. You Absolutely. know, it's very, it's very, yeah, difficult to just say like, oh yeah, this is fact. It has a lot of gray area. Mm -hmm. It has so much gray area where you you just get trapped in this. Uh, a rabbit hole, you know, to be able to decipher what is authentic, what is like appropriation, for example. For a lot of us, it's su such a logical thing, but for so many people, it's so difficult to feel when something is appropriative, even to ask to an artist. Like, often you more often get to see like companies, because clo fashion houses, clothing brands tend to be structured companies. And artists often are just individuals managed by him or her, but not like 
a whole set of, uh, depending on the how big the mm -hmm. artist is. I mean, there are commercially big artists that uh, <laughs> save themselves in <laughs> corporate situations. Mm -hmm. But uh, often you see like companies not understanding the sensitivity of of what it takes to be an artist or what artistry is. And uh, yeah, brands have to learn a lot in this in this realm of how you treat artists and. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see new ways of income for artists. But uh, yeah, appreciation for what, you know, came, uh, what brought an artist to the point that he came, or to understand what type of story someone is telling and the sensitivity of that, super important. Nice. Um, yeah, what do you think the future of that art and fashion relationship is and what role does technology play in it? Like, where do we go from here? You know, we just had this big discussion about it's already come such a long way, you know, it's kind of like it's almost been liberated and it's become super accessible for people. But what's next? I know you do, I saw on your Instagram, for example, that your, some of your paintings are available mm -hmm. in digital format now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, exactly. one of you guys mentioned NFTs earlier, but like, What's next? I think we're gonna go places. <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's hard to tell what's next, but I feel like the technology being out there, making the connections easier, making production a lot easier, 3D printed stuff. Uh, it's uh, it's really the the field is changing quickly, and uh, sometimes it's hard to keep up even like what people put out there because uh, there's a lot of new things happening. But I feel like uh, we're just going to see more and more a morphing of these two. And I feel like people are also more uh, ready to be wearing more pieces that are uh, more outside of the comfort. So the, um, I, yeah, I, th I think we'll see more radical collaborations like these. In, in art, the revolution starts all, always, I think, that through media or... Uh, uh, it can be sculpture, it can be painting, it can be all types of art, but that's where people take every bit of inch of freedom they have to, to translate how they feel or, or what they think. Mm. So we should keep a close eye. Yeah. Art pushes culture. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. That one. Interesting. Nice. I always kind of like to um, end one of these sessions on a more practical level, you know, for anyone that's watching that is very much interested in this relationship or wants to you know, do collaborations, whether it's from like an art perspective or a fashion perspective in the future. So do you have any practical advice uh, for brands or artists when it comes to creating impactful collaborations? Mm -hmm. Do the research. <laughs> Pay your artists. That's the first impact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's difficult, man. For me, I'm a difficult person. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, that sounds like for you, it's obviously more of like a personal connection then. Yeah, because I feel like you, like you have to connect with the brand um, in a way and not just do it from a commercial perspective. But, but that's me. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not, and I don't know, maybe if the commercial side of it is very good, it still helps you in your art and in everything you do. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a hard question for me, man. Mm -hmm. well, to individuals, I would say like, uh, uh, just, just approach, approach people. See, see, don't don't think inside boxes of your medium, uh, and try to try to try to build some bridges with people that are uh, that are using the same material but in a different way, and then see see if you like it, see if you don't. But I, I, what I felt like also the last year, also through social media, it's very easy to hit someone up and from there an, an organic something can grow. But, but don't, don't think that uh, because you're doing a certain thing, it isn't able to take a jump into another medium. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Maru? I mean, you've been part of these collaborations for a while now, multiple of them through the new originals. What was like the main thing that you learned you know, over time, what's like the secret sauce for these collaborations to work? From a brand point of view, mm -hmm. 
what I said earlier, I think is is uh, is very important that you understand the sensitivities of what it is like to work with an artist, so that you take the time to understand someone's craft, someone's intentions, and then see what you can bring to the table for that to be to, to be showcased in a proper way, or what you can do, what you see, whatever you can always translate. But it's very good to to first take the time to understand the artist, especially if like. Uh, yeah, you're doing the production side. Like we, a lot of the times, when we work with artists, uh, they are not really involved in the technicalities of what is happening uh, behind the scenes of the production up to the design, and then it's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, you really carry someone's work. You really carry someone's visual or story, and they did an effort there. So. Uh, Make sure that you protect the values uh, of the artist as well, doing that. And from that, a lot of beautiful things can happen. Mm. So, I mean, we've all kind of heard this expressions like, oh, artists are really difficult to work with. But is that because oftentimes people don't do what you just said? They will just kind of well, it takes try a lot to, to impose their artist, own views? I think. Huh? It takes a lot to become an artist, I think. It's a lot of uh, digging in yourself or, or, or the artists that I know. They have to dig in themselves. They have to take the time to study, do their 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 studies, of course, uh, like what they want to evolve involve in their work or their approach. And uh, yeah, I I think it takes a lot for the artists that I know. It's not like a, a part time thing. You just do some stuff. No, you really, even though unconsciously or consciously. It's a very brave thing, I think, in my opinion, to to say I'm an artist and I, and to put your feelings and ideas on, uh, on any type of medium. Nice. Yeah. I think artists are hard to work with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I think like yeah, 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 what he said, man. You work really hard. You put a lot into your craft. You're really like sensitive about everything you create, you know, and like you work to get uh, into a certain light where they see you, but to be, to, to that whole road to, to come in that light and to stay in that light is hard. Like you really have to know and stand for something, you know, and, and maybe they experience that as hard. But I think as an artist, I'm really respectful to everyone creating, for every brand, everyone that's trying, because I know what it takes to create stuff, you know. But I do have a vision about stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the, the, the funny, one of the funny differences is also as a brand, if you put out a product or a shoot and someone's like, ah, man, I don't like it. You can, you're, you're like way behind so many layers of being a brand. Mm -hmm. But as an artist, it's like standing naked in the street. Mm -hmm. And then people looking at you and saying, ah, that doesn't look good. That everything is so much more mm -hmm. amplified. You know? Sensitivity. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Crazy, yeah. huh? Yeah, man. Sick. Or nice. even let it be a song or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And yeah, I mean, maybe we can finish on what's next for you. Like, what are you currently working on? Creating, man. Creating the whole day, every day. Dreaming and creating, working on craft, and like every day trying to get better. That's it. I don't know. Expect the unexpected. <laughs> when is uh, yeah? When is this released? <laughs> when is the release that day of this? Estimately next week. Next week. Well, the twenty first of August, we're gonna open our new, the new originals flagship store mm -hmm. uh, on the Zeedijk here in Amsterdam. Congrats, bro! Thank, Thank you so much. Crazy. Nice. So we're putting, as we say in Dutch, the dots on the on the on the eyes. Cherries on top. Cherries on top. Exactly. Uh, and preparing uh, to receive everyone that is interested. Uh, of course, after the twenty first, we're open, but uh, we're celebrating. So that's what we're working towards nice. right now. See you there. <laughs> I'm gonna pull up. Yeah, please do. Yes. All of you. So is it. Sure. I'll be uh, this this week particularly. I'm I'm busy with making a film. Uh, after that, I'll jump back in the studio. I hope to do an exhibition early next year, so people can interact with the works, not on Instagram but in physical. 
um, for the rest, uh, we'll see where this uh, wave takes us. Nice. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks again for coming, guys. It was really interesting to, you know, have this dialogue and discussion. And until next time. <laughs> Thank you.